Thanks for joining us for this Evolution webinar. My name is Eduardo Coloma and I am the My Planning Business Manager for MapTech Australia. Today, Ali Molawisada and I are continuing the MapTech webinar series with a special preview of what's coming in Evolution version 5.1 of our Mind Scheduling solution. Hi everyone, I'm Ali and I'm a tech service consultant based in Perth. So today we are going to focus on some of the practical functionality and integration between Vulkan and Evolution, which will make your scheduling faster and smarter. If you have any questions during the webinar, you can enter them into the questions panel onto your GoToWebinar interface, and we will answer them at the end of the session if time permits. All right, there is a lot of change coming in this next update, which we are really excited about. There's some great new functionality and improvement across evolution strategy and origin. So that's what we're going to be showing today. We are going to be focusing three things. So we're going to review a couple of improvement in strategy, a few of them in origin, and we are going to touch base on the integration between the design component and the scheduling component. So if you're not familiar with the evolution suite, we got evolution strategy, which essentially is the main tool to run a strategic scenario based on cut of prey optimization and sequence to maximize the net present value. On top of that, you can put a lot of constraint, including the blending as well. It provides the ability to use the block model directly. This obviously reduces the amount of data preparation and minimizes the risk associated with the data manipulation. It's very flexible but allowed to model multi-processor operation with dependent and independent processes with the ability to add as many user control are required. And then we got evolution origin, which essentially allowed to run life of mine or medium term scheduling based on predefined cut of rate in a holistic approach, including haulage and waste landfall optimization, plus blending and MPV. The main feature for evolution origin is to allow to work with a block by block or using attributed irregular solids. It's flexible to model any kind of operation in a simple way, into the workflow to create uh, an interface to reproduce any my plan scenario. And it's fully integrated with Vulkan, which provides a best solution in the market. So let's go to a couple of uh, improvement in strategy now. So we are going to show you the software. So this is the evolution interface. Uh, we are going to focus uh, a couple of things in strategy at the moment. I'm going to start with a few things. Small improvement, but I think it's going to be very easy for the user now. The, one of the big improvements that we're doing with the project manager is the ability to define the default folders. So now you can actually sort the information and, and uh, put in a specific folder in order to make it easy how you're going to be working with evolution and all the information in the project. Uh, another interesting thing is related with the pivot functionality. There is a couple improvement in there. So let me just show you one thing. So we got, let's bring this pivot here and let's bring one solution. So uh, as per normal, you got access to all the fields in this uh, pivot area. Sometimes, depending on the, the job that you are running, sometimes you can have a lot of items in here, a lot of articles. This is become this new feature become very handy. So now you've got the ability to filter on the top. So let's say that you want the period, you can write down there and you can actually bring that one to the row label. And if you want to go to the tone, tones now, just write in again and we can get the tones straight away. Uh, if you want to reset the view, then you're going to be in the normal view and you can obviously scroll down up in order to select whatever is the item that you are interested. Uh, there is more functionality in the pivot, but I think Ali is going to be touching a couple of things later on. The another thing that I want to uh, mention is uh, this is the normal strategy and specification file. Now the user has the ability to indicate the naming of the period name. So if you are in a calendar year or financial year, you are going to have the ability to write down that one and then display that one in the reporting. So it's going to be more sense for the reporting point of view, uh, and the user are going to have all the flexibility to this one without any issue. All right, so let's move on to the next ticket for the strategy. This is one of the things that the people is, is asking. 
is basically we incorporate the seeding functionality for origin. Now we put that one in a strategy. Now, in terms of the interface, it's really simple. So let me just show you this one here. Let's open right. So where you're going to find that one is basically under the economic model, the calendar. So you go into this area. Let's remove the, the, the seeding for now. So this is the same interface that we got in origin. So essentially, the user needs to select one of the previous strategy schedule, select one of those, and then use it from one period to another. All right. So in this case, we are going to be using that scheduling for period one to nine. And from period 10, we are going to start to optimize again. This is really handy because allow to keep one of the scheduling that you want in the period that you are really happy with and then optimize from this point forward. So I'm not going to run it now, but essentially we, we, we can see how this actually see the result. So we got another pivot. I'm going to bring some results. So this is my original uh, run that I am using to see the next one in the first night period. And as you can see, we got exactly the same solution from period one to nine. And then from period 10 forward, obviously the solution is, is a little bit different, which essentially is what you want. And uh, as you can see, not just in terms of the number, it's obviously in terms of the graph as well. This is another feature that is going to be available with 5.1. The last thing that I want to mention today in relation with the strategy is one of the new items that we've been working with, which is, um, let me just bring this one again, and let me bring this one here. What with this one? As you probably are familiar with, the strategy is working with all the material from the pit to the different process. You can add multiple process, multiple model, etc. But for the waste point of view, always was just the waste and you got all the material associated in one particular spot. It wasn't possible to model different ways. Up. So for 5.1, we introduced that modification. And as you can see, you can have as many ways as you want. Uh, the way that you are introducing the ways to the flowchart is basically and this one. So you click the ways and you're going to have another way than there. And for every way and you're going to be able to provide the Collage cost associated from the pit exit basically to this particular waste dump. And then you're going to have the ability to define incremental capacity and an incremental cost. Obviously, when the software is going to be running, he's going to obviously choose the cheapest one, put the material in there, and then if that is full, he's going to move to the next one. So I uh, got a solution already here. Let's open it up. So let's open the previous solution. Let's close this one for now. Let's close that one as well. Let's bring the, this is the current solution. So as you can see, you got a section, which is the waste section, 58 million in this particular scenario. I'm going to bring the new solution. Yep. And now essentially the user are going to have more detail associated where is the material goes, particularly for the waste point of view. So the waste dam one, which is the closest one and the cheapest one, essentially is filled first. And then when you reach the capacity of that one, you move forward to the next one. So that is an interesting feature that we got in there. This information is also available through the sequence report. And you're going to be able to see from there, as well as the period name, as, as I mentioned before. That is basically what we want to share with you today. Just one sneak peek. There is another functionality which allows in a strategy to calculate the equipment hours. So then you're going to be able to calculate tracks, but that is going to be part of the next web. All right. So now I'm going to pass on to Ali, and he's going to be demonstrating a couple of things in Origin and mainly the integration between the design component and the scheduling component. Who you are. Hi everyone. So before we had um, before we had Origin uh, solids as a single objective uh, optimization. So now we are introducing what we had in Origin blocks 
to origin solids. So it'll be a multiple objective optimization. So if I go ahead, pull up a origin setup. So in here, when we select the reserve solids, we can select the material movement or equipment and optional objectives, blend or NPV. So for this setup, we have uh, the pit and two stockpiles going to the mill. And we're gonna demonstrate the blending in here. So as you can see, there's equipment and blend. In the blend configuration, here we can assign different elements. So for example, if it's an iron deposit, put iron, you can put alumina and silica, for example. And here we can control the weighting of each of these elements. The other thing is if we have a nickel deposit, we can use a blend ratio. So you can't control the variable ratio. The great variable is nonlinear. You can't divide, you can't divide them and control that division. You need to treat them separately in order to keep the nonlinear relationship between them. So here we have like grade one or grade two, and that'll be associated with the null. Next, uh, moving on, I'll show you the result for the blending. Uh, so that's the blend schedule, the grade for that element going to the mill. And the other feature we have here is we can add a lower and upper boundary limit to that field. So as you can see, we are uh, controlling the schedule up to period nine and it's within specs of the lower and upper boundary. And now we'll be moving on to the MPV. So the multi-objective NPV. So we have the multiple objective optimization for the solids. And if we go to the objective here, we can see the NPV is highlighted. And we go to the configuration. So this is a new window for the NPV. We have the discount rate which the user needs to apply. And this is the annual discount rate. So if your calendar has like a monthly or a quarterly period, and the software will be able to automatically uh, calculate what's the uh, correct discount rate for those periods. Moving on, we have the expression. We can apply an expression, say for example, in the mining cost. Uh, here we have like $2.50 for uh, every bench incrementally at 10 cents. So we can apply an expression like that. Uh, we can either we can either choose a variable. So in the processing cost, we can assign a variable and this variable would have a weighting uh, against it in the flow chart. So you would have to go in the parcel settings and define that category, which is processing cost. And that's cost per weight, which is the weighting for that. If you go back to the uh, window here. So the other uh, thing we can do is you can just assign a value for say rehab costs. We can just assign a single value if you like. And as you can see next to each of these costs, you can see the calendar highlighted. So if you want to control this even further on a period basis, you can do that. So if I select the calendar, you can go to the calendar here and you can actually assign say for example capital per period or the processing cost or mining cost whatever that's in this configuration so here we go further down in the into elements so for a polymetallic mine deposit you can have different elements in here and there's no need to calculate an NSR value for this 
So we can assign, say, for copper, for example, we can assign the price, the cost, selling cost, and even in the price, we can go back to the calendar and have a variable cost across all the periods, if you like. And this is, you can calculate the revenue for each of these elements. We also have the reclaim cost you can put in there. So for the stockpile, the mining recovery cost and the screening station, if you have a screening station in there. So let's just look at a result from this. We can go into the schedule report. So in the schedule report, there's a new column we have here called NPV. And this is all the components that's been calculated when we ran the schedule. So you've got your mining cost, processing cost, and capital if you have it in there. And you can see the cash flow there and the total NPV. So in this um, exercise, we are actually, it's only a two objective um, schedule. So you can actually duplicate this and have um, blend included in there as well. So you can have NPV blend and material movement. The algorithm can manage as many objectives as we want. However, we keep up to three so we can visualize the result. And now we'll move on to integration between Vulcan and evolution. So here we have the Vulcan component. I'll just load this. So we can see here, this is the ultimate pit for this mine site. And these are the cutbacks for the pit. And if I load up the topography, so this is all we need to calculate, to generate the solids for the evolution schedule. So if we go here under mining block generation into the setup, and as you can see, we selected the topography and the stages, and you can add as many stages as you like here. Uh, in the attributes section, we can apply all these attributes. There's about 250 attributes you can apply to each of the solid. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, we go into the bench section, and in here we can define the bench height and even flitches if you like. And this will all be output into a triangulation folder. So we click OK. And now we go into the mining block generation and we create the blocks in this option. In here, we are using a grid that's a size of 50 by 50 and with a rotation azimuth of 32. So we have a prefill option here, which makes it even more simple to use. So once we apply that, we can have a reconciliation report as well to see if there's any volume changes between the solids created from the actual surface and topography to the uh, blocks. So in the reserve uh, window here, we can also flag the reserve to the solids. And so we apply and run. So right now it is flagging those 50 attributes to each of the solids. And there's about 618 solids in this exercise. So we'll just wait for that. And now you can see it's flagging the block model onto the solids. And it's generating the reconciliation report. So if I open the reconciliation report, so you can see there's a 0% change. So it's captured all the volumes of, of that. And I'll go and show a cross-section view. I'll just hide the triangulations. Uh, 
and I'll bring in the blocks that are generated. So these are the blocks that are generated and you can see if I go to one of these, uh, one of these solids here, it, sh it should pop up with all the attributes that are assigned to each of these solids. And if I show that in plan V and rotate it, so that's the actual solids that were created. Now we're gonna bring this into evolution. So we'll just uh, start up the setup here. Call it test. And we'll bring in that block model. So these are the solids that were just created in Vulcan. And we'll assign a stage variable and the bench and click on run. So now this is uh, importing all the 618 solids that was just generated. And it's pretty much as simple as that. You can see if I highlight one of the solids, uh, you, that's the pit there. And I'll just apply a filter. And you can filter this by a bench, for example. And yeah, that shows the um, pit there. So the next thing I'll be talking about is the whole edge component in Vulcan. So if we get rid of all that. And we have here the network So this is the network for the pits that we just saw before. And we're gonna bring this into evolution. So in evolution, if you open up a road network, we can simply drag and drop this DGD into evolution here and this will bring up the panel for the import. So we select all the layers there and we can also assign a layer name as an attribute. The new features here, we have the loaded and unloaded speeds. And also uh, we can override existing roads that are already there. I just put a rolling resistance here. So once we bring that into evolution there, we can filter that as well. We can apply a filter there and we can color it by layer name. So you can see how easy that was bringing the road network from Vulcan to evolution. Uh, now we'll pass it on to Eduardo. Thanks, Ali. That was really good. Thank you for highlighting a couple of modification in in origin, there is more, obviously, but this is just a sneak peek that we are presenting today. So, all right, so it's time to go to the questions. Uh, let me just check quickly here. Right, so I've got a couple of questions in here. I'm gonna pick this one. Uh, Ali, if you can ask for this one. Can I, in the hole, can I incorporate the long hole versus the short hole? Uh, yes, Eduardo. So by default, the trucks haul by utilizing the shortest distance from the source point to the destination. However, we can force trucks to take a long haul by introducing a force waypoint in the haulage configuration. 
for example, this could be benefit if you want to be used to dump material to a waste dump that's further away than a waste dump that's in close proximity. Great. Let me just, uh, I'm going to take this one. This, what kind of constraint strategy is capable to manage? Well, the strategy has a lot of different constraints. It's very flexible. You can incorporate like a bench to novel sinking ray, global accumulation constraint, stage accumulation, et cetera, et cetera. There's plenty of those constraints. And essentially, uh, you, you need to remember that because we are optimizing in a global, in a global way, it's, it's very important how the theory of constraint are working together too. So back to the question, it's, it's a lot of different constraints uh, that you can use. Uh, it all depends what do you want to basically control. Let me pick another one from here. Um, all right, so is the software able to mine without undercutting? Ali, do you want to take that one? So in origin, we have different types of dependency rules, which control the sequence of mining solids. One of the dependencies is called geometric dependency, which can be automatically generated to mine solids that sit above another solid, and this will ensure there is no undercutting. Cool. And the last question that we've got here is, uh, how does the software manage the input crushing system? So the current input crushing system you have on the flow chart, you can pick one single mill. Uh, so the input crushing um, can create, we can create multiple locations for the same mill in the haulage network to define multiple IPCs. And in each IPC, we can have its own capacity or we can have a multiple of IPCs with one combined capacity. All right. Thanks, Ali. We have a couple of other questions here. I'm sure, but we are running a little bit out of the time to address it now. So we will be, get back to you after the webinar to answer those. All right. So that brings us to the end of the today webinar. Customer with current maintenance can download the latest version of Evolution from user.mapdeck.com. As you can see, version 5.025 is available now. And if you have current Evolution maintenance, keep an eye on 5.1, which is coming soon. Of course, if, if you have any question about Evolution, please contact your local Mapdeck office for any assistance. You can find all the relevant contact details on our website. And if you like to view this webinar again or share this one with your colleague, it will be available online at mapted.com. While you are there, you can catch up on our other webinars covering a whole range of topics. We will be running additional webinars about other topics in the near future. Thanks again for watching.